Hey, what's up, guys? This is Rich from KME Gamer TV. Uh, I'm going to be doing a review of the Razer Deathstalker Ultimate. Uh, if you caught my unboxing, uh, this is uh, the part where I basically review it. I've had enough time to use it and deal with any issues, so I can kind of give you uh, positive or negative feedback, which I received from using it. So, hope you guys enjoy. One of the first impressions I got from when I first started using this Deathstalker was that it's a very high quality build keyboard. Uh, the keys feel extremely nice to type on. Uh, I'm, I used to use a Black Widow, so I was kind of worried about the, the change of the style and keys, but these chiclet style keys, I think that's what they call them, uh, very pleasant to type on. Uh, it's very sturdy, it's a thin board, and it just looks slick, so I, I was impressed with it. Uh, but uh, one of the negative things was right off the bat, the blade UI was uh, kind of distorted, and I, it, functionality was not affected at all. Everything worked properly. It was it was just cosmetics uh, was kind of iffy, so uh, that was kind of uh, freaking me out at first. But I did get that taken care of. And uh, one of the last impressions that I got right off the bat using it was that the lights are nowhere near as bright as my Black Widow. Um, I would compare it to the highest brightness on this keyboard is actually dimmer than the lowest setting on the Black Widow. So I was kind of disappointed with that, but not not a big deal because I always used it on the lowest setting anyway. So Now I'm going to talk a little bit more specifically about uh, the Razer Blade UI, uh, the touchscreen LCD, as well as the 10 buttons that sit above it. Uh, it, it looks very sharp. Uh, each, each of the individual images um, are set up so they look very clear from where you're sitting. Uh, if you look over them, they actually get kind of blurry because uh, the way that they're... I'm not sure how they do it, but they got it so they, they look you know nice from an angle uh, and as far as the LCD it's it's easy to change the image um, the buttons it's pretty simple to change the functions uh, there's different you know just like keyboards and mouses through Razer you can change uh, profiles and customize buttons and whatnot it's no different um, when I first actually got the keyboard um, the that that section of the keyboard was actually distorted and each of the pictures were fuzzy uh, here I'll, I'll actually show you an example here you can see what the, what the screen looked like before the desktop would load and then once it was finally loaded uh, all the apps and all the pictures would look exactly like this image does again here's before the desktop loads and here's after it's not a huge uh, you know, obviously it's nothing really major, but it still shouldn't do that. So uh, I worked back and forth with emailing uh, Razor support to get the issue fixed. I was actually afraid I was going to have to send it in, but it actually turned out that it was just interference from my motherboard for whatever reason, and this thing needed its own dedicated power source. So I had to actually go out and purchase a USB 2.0 card, PCI card, and install it and that's what I have it plugged into as we speak and that seemed to clear the problem right up so if anybody else has this issue that is how you fix it okay now I'm basically just gonna go through a rundown of uh, the different apps that are on here this is the basic numeric pad function which 
uh, functions as a normal numeric pad as well as you know your basic keys that come above it uh, uh, next is the macro record button and, uh, after that is the gaming mode button where you can actually customize it on the fly so you, you can customize basically what touching that button does enabling that button does um, this one is the World Wide Web Browser where you can go to any site you can type into a URL and it's automatically got the Razer site set up so I'm just click one of their links their uh, game boost or whatever I don't know but it, it works pretty well actually um, so if you you know whatever reason you got the internet browser right there uh, this next one's a YouTube app um, where you can actually watch YouTube videos on your keyboard followed by the Facebook app as well as Twitter so you can tweet while you're gaming or doing whatever uh, I've yet to use it yet uh, Google Mail has its own app and I use this one all the time the clock as well as timer function so if you need to time yourself or you know you, you're doing something you just want to know what time it is quick you just press that uh, it also comes preloaded with 10 or I'm sorry six other apps which uh, for some reason I have a hard time getting them to work uh, but you're supposed to slide your three fingers across the LCD and it loads the Counter-Strike app uh, the Team Fortress app a Battlefield app uh, Game Timer app an app that actually loads a snapshot of uh, whatever you're doing and uploads it to Facebook and the last one's the Knights of the Old Republic app which I believe comes with the Star Wars keyboard that uh, is themed around that game so I from what I hear there's supposed to be more um, you know Razer has a software developer kit for people who want to develop apps for this so you know the more people that do it the sooner we can get some new apps so I'm kinda of excited to see what they're gonna come out with as far as that goes um, here I guess I'm just giving you a showdown of you know me just playing with the keyboard uh, it's a it's a very nice keyboard um, I love the customization uh, I love this the little screen it's it's a nice addition to you know anybody's gamers rig uh, Razer always makes quality products I actually have it set uh, this is one of their new, you know, they kind of started doing this to some of their products in recent years, but the uh, multicolor lighting option where it actually will just constantly keep changing lighting. Now, a Razer product or any uh, gaming peripheral for that matter is only as good as the software and drivers that operate it. So, Razer runs under their software called Razer Synapse 2.0, which is excellent customization UI software. Um, for doesn't matter what device you got, you got a Naga, Death Adder, Lycosa, uh, Black Widow. It's it's great for because you can pretty much customize any button or any key, uh, as well as speed settings and other settings that may be specific to that device. Also, it allows you to save multiple different profiles. Uh, for example. I have one for when I'm doing like video editing. I got one for when I'm gaming for a specific game, you know, StarCraft, Mass Effect, Guild Wars, whatever. Uh, it just makes it easy so you, you don't have to keep changing buttons or whatever or keep going in the game. You can just kind of customize it and tailor it to your specific purposes that you need it. And the other great thing about Razer Synapse 2.0 is that it's one software for all your Razer devices because yeah, that's kind of the irritating thing with stuff because everything's got its own drivers and whatnot um, it's it's all visual based and it's got its own auto updater so you don't have to keep searching for updates and it's just really really handy and it's a really nice way I think they did an excellent job with the way they put their software together Alright, so taking a look at the Razer Synapse 2.0 software, you can see right off the bat, there's uh, it's all visual based. So if you can change each and every key, you can make them a different key, you can make them load a program, you can make them change a profile. Pretty much 
any any of the options you can make them disabled uh, you can see the other options. I'm just using an example. Uh, one key to launch Guild Wars 2 if I wanted to have it do so. Um, and then it, it actually highlights which keys that you have edited. So here's here's the editor for the Razorblade UI. As you can see, the, you could change the speed settings You know, for when you use it as a mouse cursor. Uh, here you can change the different button profile. You can change the image on there. You can change the lighting for the keys. You can change it to enable the color cycling, which just you know makes it constantly changing color. So as you, you can see, there's, there's a variety of options, and anybody who's used Razer Synapse uh, before knows how nice it is. All right, so I'm going to wrap up this video with uh, my final thoughts on the whole thing. Uh, it's it's a very excellent keyboard. Uh, I do not regret buying it one bit. It's uh, super customizable. Basically fits all, well, it should fit anybody's needs. And it's got a lot of useful features, more than I'll probably ever use. And the thing is solid like a rock. Uh, feels excellent to type on. But, uh, however, there are always going to be a few negatives so uh, one is the price it is two hundred and fifty dollars so that might be a drawback for some people it was for me uh, it may need a USB 2.0 card to power I, I I don't know for sure I know I did so I can't imagine I'm the only one and she's a long one uh, it's about 22.1 inches long so as long as you got the space the money and the power you should be good so thank you for watching I hope this video helped you uh, find what you're looking for uh, please subscribe and like or don't do whatever you're gonna do till next time